Hi guys, Lisa He here, Borderlands Bakery, and today I'm going to show you my approach for how I do lettering on cookies. So hopefully by the end of this, you're going to be able to create fun designs like this. Wash your hands. And thin lettering like this. Physical distancing, not social distancing. Um, and then some fun letters like this. So all different types, and you can even get a fancy and paint yours after you've piped it if you want. The purpose of this is really to show you my thinking and how I approach different fonts, different sizes of the same font. It's slightly a different approach and icing consistency. So let's get into it. What you'll be learning today are skills we will usually teach in a physical or online workshop. But due to COVID-19, we adjusted our approach and decided to release this video on YouTube so that anybody across the globe can learn for free. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel to continue supporting our efforts so that we can keep creating content that's value added for you. Really quickly, I wanna show you guys how close I am to the cookies when I'm actually piping. It's about three to four inches away. When I'm filming, I've got the camera in between the piping bag and my face, so I'm a little farther away and sometimes it gets a little bit awkward. I can actually be much more precise if I'm closer, so just keep that in mind as you're watching this video. First thing I'll be showing you is how to reach a good consistency for writing. I'm going to be repurposing some flood consistency icing that I use for these terrazzo tile cookies. I had flooded them the day before and let them fully dry for 12 hours before putting my writing details on. So they're totally hard when you tap on them. I'm going to be dumping out my previously used colors and adjusting them for writing. I also have some powdered sugar close by to thicken up my icing, plus my base icing that was made in case I need more icing, some water and a pipette as well as a small cup fitted with one of our Borderlands Bakery tipless piping bags, which we'll be putting our new writing icing into. To get our white writing icing ready, we'll be adding some The Sugar Art Master Elite in white to ensure that we get that nice, bright, true white to really contrast between the background color of the cookie. I'm going to be adding a bit of Master Elite powder using these tiny adorable spoons that we offer for purchase in our shop. They make it really easy to not accidentally pour too much of that powder into our icing. I'm also adding a bit more of my base icing which looks like this thick, medium fluffy consistency to my base white for more product. I'm activating my Master Elite powder by adding some water to it and then stirring it and combining it with the rest of the icing, feeling out that consistency before making any adjustments. Right now you can see I'm kind of uh, just combining it, letting it fall off the spatula, and it's coming off in really thin ribbons. This is more of a flood consistency, so we gotta add more powder sugar to thicken it up. This is a final consistency that I prefer for my writing. It can be described as something that's slightly thinner than toothpaste consistency and about a 25 second icing. So it's actually not really something that can settle all the way on its own. You would have to use a scribe to kind of jiggle and oscillate the surface of the icing to help all the peaks settle. I'm going to transfer this all into my piping bag and then move on to the next colors. 
When I'm not using that much icing in a bag, I like to close them off by tying them. I just feel like that gives the most secure seal. And here I'm just showing you how I like to tie them. I just like to loop it through a hole, very simply like this. I'm going to repeat the same process for all of the other colors, yellow, pink, blue. I'm going to be repurposing my old flood consistency icing and thickening it up with that powder sugar to get to that slightly less than toothpaste consistency that I want for writing. I'm also moving from light to dark, doing all the same colors in one bowl. That really helps save some time. And I'm also going to trim off the ends of my piping bags and that's just a personal thing. I don't like them flapping around when I'm piping. Here are all the colors that we're going to be using today. They're all the same, slightly less thick than toothpaste consistency icing. And depending on how we cut the tip, which is what I'm going to show you next, we can change things up a little bit. So cutting the tip is super important to ensure success in writing. Our tipless bags have a seam that run right down the middle. If you're using a piping tip, you may not have to worry about this as much, but I like using tipless piping bags because you can adjust to a very small level of detail how big your piping tip is. So depending on how large your piping tip is, you can create varying widths with your writing. If you want to learn how to use tipless piping bags, we have a great video that we put together last year. You can find the link down below in the description box. When you're trimming your piping bag for writing with icing, you want to trim it so that the size of your piping tip matches the smallest width of your specific font. The best way to ensure you have the proper consistency is to test it. To this day, I test my icing and sometimes have to remix it and rebag it and that's totally okay. Trim a hole in your piping bag starting small because you can always go bigger later. Make sure the size of your hole is the size of the smallest width of your font. Get used to handling that icing, so take some time to play with it. Touch down at the beginning of your line or at any sharp change in direction. Drag and drop your icing while applying a little pressure, keeping a good distance. I say about half an inch between your cookie and your piping bag to ensure that the icing has space to fall smoothly behind you. Move your hand and guide your icing, allowing gravity to do most of the work. And with a little pressure, let your icing fall out of the bag all the while moving it. This results in what I describe as a drag and drop smooth icing motion. This technique is how we get those smooth lines for writing thin fonts, but also the same technique many of us use to create smooth outlines for our cookies. So keep playing with it, get really comfortable with handling your icing. Now print out the practice sheet included in my blog post that I link you in the description box below. Everyone can download these for free and you can follow along and use these sheets as practice. Feel free to put these sheets in sheet protectors or put a piece of parchment over them so that you can reuse them as much as you'd like. I talk a lot more about this technique in the blog post itself and I also link you to all the different materials. So definitely please read the blog post as well because it's a great supplement to this video lesson. Here we are with the pink icing that we worked on earlier. I'm going to trim it so that the tip is the size of the smallest width of the smallest font that I'm going to be working on. So it matches with this guy over here. That's that popular Ray Dunn font, which I will also link you in the PDF in our blog. And we're also going to have a blue font that's going to have a slightly bigger hole. So right now I'm kind of cleaning off the tip, squeezing it, pinching it, never wiping because that really messes with the tip 
I'm using one of my eco towels which is a great paper towel alternative so you don't have to keep throwing away paper towels to kind of pinch and clean off the tip. You'll want to do that often to ensure you have a clear piping tip for writing. Super, super important. So I'm just kind of adjusting the tip and here's what it looks like. You notice I've got that seam facing away from the paper or kind of lined up against my fingers as I'm holding it. That way the seam, if there is one, does not get in the way. I'm just showing you how it can also come out curly if you don't move fast enough. It can also come out curly if your tip is clogged. So again, keep cleaning it. I'm using that drag and drop motion to just kind of show you the path of the icing. And keep in mind, I'm like a foot away right now. So I'm a little bit on the struggle bus and just trying to get used to that. All right, here we go. Cleaning off that tip again. And now we're going to start writing. And we're using some very small drag and drops to make it work. And it just really depends on the size of the font. Notice that when I'm doing the long lines, I'm doing the drag and drop, but when I'm doing the short lines, I'm very close to the icing and I'm pretty much just drawing across the paper. So drag and drop for the long lines. And then if you are able to kind of just drag your icing tip across the surface of the cookie or the paper for the short lines, like that little horizontal line which connects the A's and the H's, then that works. And then here's the much smaller text, so even smaller than that first text. I have my piping tip directly on the surface, barely touching the surface, but still touching the surface and just tracing it like this. This is how we practice to get better. As we move on to cookies, we're going to be using a different technique. Here you can also see that I took out an edible marker and just showed you that sometimes you don't always have to be writing with icing. When the font is so thin and so small, you can choose to write with a very fine tipped edible marker using a projector or something like that to help you and it'll have a great effect as well. So the style that we were just looking at is a Ray Dunn style. It's a single width font, so it doesn't have varying widths like calligraphy or a lot, of the, a lot of the hand letter designs that we see that's popular nowadays. And we use kind of the drag and drop for larger letters, and then we use that tracing very close to the surface technique for smaller letters. What about a font that's slightly thicker with some thin danglies? So, with this, because of the nature of the font and the size of it, the danglies are a bit smaller than the, the body of the font. I like to be very close to it. I like to vary my pressure while piping. And I like to go over it several times to kind of fill in all of the space of that font. And then I like to keep my hole relatively small the width of the little danglies, not the width of the actual font. The danglies are the smallest width in the font. We'll keep going back to that, right? And then I just go back and add a little more icing if needed in certain spots, right directly into the previously piped lines of icing. And then in order to smooth it out, I use a scribe immediately. And that will help get rid of any peaks because again, this is almost toothpaste consistency, not quite. And if you find that you're not quite getting the danglies, you can use your scribe to kind of cheat and pull it out and just drag your icing out a tiny bit to fill out those dangly parts. The next font we're looking at is also a single width font, but it is super freaking thin. 
These are the hardest fonts in my opinion and I feel like consistency is super important but control of your icing is even more important. So you have to get very comfortable with the drag and drop technique and you use a combination um, of methods for these type of swirly thin fonts. I lift, drag and drop for the long strokes and then for the short strokes I keep my piping bag just above the piping surface. So using those two techniques in conjunction we can tackle these thin fonts. And for the one that I'm doing here I think it's even possible to have a smaller hole for your piping bag to get an even thinner font and that'll come with practice. A bigger font in a very thin style like this is much easier to pipe than a smaller font so kind of use your judgment when you're doing cookies that are using very very thin lines. You can also alternatively use a marker to capture a look like this if that's what you're going for. Fonts like these are super popular right now. They are what I like to call variable width fonts, and they are that handle lettering or calligraphy style font. If you're writing these letters, like using a pen or a marker or something like that, notice all the downstrokes are thick and all the upstrokes are thin. So we are going to take that concept with us. We are going to outline and flood all the thick bits and then just kind of drag and drop or trace all the thin parts, which is what's happening here. And I actually have some tips in my blog post for reducing cratering and some tips for using this in the dehydrator. Make sure to definitely check out my blog post for all the links to all the resources that'll help you with those issues. Now before moving on to the next lettering exercise, we're going to clean off the tip of that piping bag. And I'm actually moving back to my pink icing, which is a slightly smaller tip, same consistency, because we're working on a smaller font here. It's the same style of font, but it's a smaller size. And you'll notice that I'm using very pressure piping with my piping tip very close, pretty much directly on top of my surface to approach this type of font. All I'm doing is adjusting pressure and kind of going back across the same lines for a thicker line as needed. There is pretty much no dragging and dropping here for a style of font like this. Here I'm switching back to my blue icing and I'm going to be using a combination of techniques that we looked at earlier. So we're going to drag and drop for some of them. We're going to outline and flood for the really, really thick parts. And then I'm going to have my piping tip really close and kind of adding more icing and thickening it up by having, by being very close to my piping surface. So you can see how when I go do that R, I'm using actually all of these techniques. And it depends on what feels good for you, what the font looks like, how the curves work, that always matters because these are like, it's a varied width font with squirrelies on the side, or I don't even know what to call them, danglies, bits, I don't know. But here, definitely a combination of all of those things and then I use a scribe to help it settle. I move back to my pink icing for the smaller version of that font because I show you that you really got to get a smaller piping tip in order to work on a smaller font. Now we're ready to look at some of the graphics that you can find online by searching, you know, Mary and Bright typography or hand lettering. You'll find a myriad of designs and I'm also linking you to some websites that I absolutely love in my blog post that have a ton of graphics that you can choose from. Some are free, some are great prices and you can get amazing bundles for just a really good deal. This is a great way to support the artists that create these fonts as well. I'm using a combination of techniques to attack these designs. I'm using a scribe to help me smooth it out as needed. And then when we look at the M is for mom, 
I'm outlining the thick parts of it. And then I'm adding the squiggles in the middle of the thick parts. I learned this from Corian's Custom Cookies. And she does this in order to reduce the possibility of cratering, which is something that is a huge struggle for a lot of us. So that's awesome. Getting it in the dehydrator ASAP or getting a fan or a moving air source on it ASAP is gonna help the small parts keep that puff, which is very highly desired and very aesthetically pleasing. When we're doing the Hello Gorgeous, you're going to see that at some parts of it, there are little peaks in the icing that you can also settle with the very gentle tap of a slightly wet finger. You have to be very, very gentle. You can also use a scribe, but I just also wanted to share what else works. Make sure you take a look at the website because I've created a ton of practice sheets for you guys. If you're not ready to transfer these skills to a cookie itself or you wanna practice some more, there are a ton of PDF downloads that I've put together and I will continue to create for everybody that you can use either on your cookies or just as practice. You can find those at borderlandsbakery.com shop. Here's something else that's really cool. Some fonts, not all of them, are robust enough that they can be used as royal icing transfers. I have a whole video on this and a blog post on this and I will link it for you below. And all you gotta do is pipe them, let them fully dry, peel them off, store them, and then use them on your next project because they keep a really, really long time. Notice for this, I've also kept my consistency quite thick and I purposely didn't use a scribe on the U so that you can see the natural consistency untouched is quite thick. So now it's time to transfer our skills from paper to cookie. And my favorite way of transferring that skill is with the help of a projector. There are some ways that you can transfer your text to cookie without a projector and I'm going to talk about that in the blog post. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you this setup where I have my laptop running, I've got a word processing software or a graphics software like PicMonkey where I write my text in my font of choice. I hook it up with a projector and I project it on my cookie and I trace. My entire projector setup is something that's also linked down below as well as in my blog post. So please check it out if you want to know the details of how I set up my projector. Using the techniques that we've learned previously, I'm using all of those for the wash your hands. And we're gonna speed this up and we're gonna speed up the next videos too, but you'll be able to see how we fill in various font designs using various techniques. Make sure to use your scribe as much as you need to. Make sure that you trim your holes pretty small and drag and drop where appropriate, but also trace and be really, really close where appropriate. Make sure to always clean off your tip by pinching it, not wiping it. In some cases, if you're writing a very thin font like this social physical distancing design we've got here, you might actually have to thin down your icing just a tad more. And that's because when you're using very thin lines, you want it to still adhere to the surface of your dried cookie. If you're using even a slightly thicker consistency, the chances are that it'll dry and then flake off a lot easier than something that's a little more runny and that will stick better. The downside to using a slightly thinner consistency is you're gonna have to have better control over your icing. You may need to trim your hole even smaller so that less of the icing comes out and you can control how much of it comes out.
As with all forms of cookie decorating, icing consistency is key and takes the longest to figure out. So please give yourself lots of time and practice to learn this skill. As a general rule of thumb, use icing that's as thick as possible. Trim your piping bag tip to match the width of the smallest width of your text. For single width style large letters, most of the times you'll be dragging and dropping. For single width smaller letters, you're going to be really tracing and keeping your piping bag very close to the surface. For varied width large lettering and monograms, if it's a huge monogram, you can outline and flood. Make sure to get that stuff in front of a fan or dehydrator ASAP to reduce chances of cratering. If it's a smaller design, feel free to find what works for you. You can outline or you can use varied pressure technique. If you're using varied pressure technique, it's usually more pressure on the downstrokes so that it's thicker, more icing comes out, and less pressure on the upstrokes. Many lettering designs require a combination of techniques in order for you to make them come to fruition. And make sure that you clean off your piping tip often by pinching, not wiping, to reduce the chance of icing drying out or something clogging your tip. And then practice and repetitions will truly tell what works for you. Most of us end up liking a combo of techniques and you know, we might all like different things, but you'll only know if you do it a lot. I hope you found this video helpful and that you learned a little bit more about writing with icing. Please smash the crap out of that like button and subscribe to our channel so that we can keep bringing you videos. And don't forget to check out that blog post in the description box because it has a ton of additional information on writing with icing, some other tips on dehydrators, using transfers, as well as where to get your fonts. So definitely check it out. If you have any other questions or have any thoughts, please leave them for me below and I will see you next time.